Uh, he's going to talk about uh, policy carrying data, a privacy abstraction for attaching terms of service to mobile data. Uh, welcome to the uh, welcome, Stefan. Thank you, Kevin. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for your willingness to stay to the last session. Uh, I hope you know you're going to enjoy yourselves. Okay, so the title of my talk is Policy Carrying Data, um, a Privacy Abstraction for Attaching Terms of Service to Mobile Data. This paper and this talk is a little sim it's similar to some, other, some of the other talks earlier today in that it's more of an idea and we want your feedback and your reaction to it. We've built something, but we haven't really sort of pursued this to a full system or anything like that. It's a more of a preliminary thought experiment. Um, so again, my name is Stefan Saroyu. I'm a researcher at Microsoft Research uh, in Redmond, and this is joint work with my colleagues, Alec Wollman and Shara Dagerwal. Shara is in the audience, and, and knowing Shara, I would not be surprised if he would ask me, if he, if he would start grilling me at the end with why he disagrees with all this, but that's how we do things at MSR. Okay, so um, mobile users clearly face a privacy crisis, and the reason for that is, is that basically, uh, it's a very sort of uh, one-sided landscape. You know, the, the uh, cloud providers dictate how they actually manage users' data, how they store it, what they do with it. And, and mobile users don't have a lot of choice. They're sort of at the mercy of cloud providers. You know, one choice is to basically trust the cloud provider and upload their data there, and you know, all bets are off, lose control over that data. And choice number two is to take their privacy very seriously and to stop using the cloud. And clearly, neither of these choices are good choices, right? And with respect to privacy, there are an increasing stream of really sort of worrisome bad news about privacy. Cloud providers are increasingly uh, starting to sort of um, uh, partner with third parties. Uh, they want ad network uh, companies to partner with. They want, they're partnering with performance monitoring services or testing services. And there is an increasing erosion of you know, to what extent the customer's data actually goes into these third parties, and, and that's worrisome. The second part is that there is a growing amount of evidence that governments are putting an enormous amount of pressure on, on cloud providers to uh, sort of share the customer's data, and, and we, we all know about these things. Now, the research community and industry is aware about this privacy crisis, and as you all know, there's a lot of building and thinking about how to actually stop or, or at least help mitigate some of, the, some of the issues in respect to this privacy crisis. Uh, people are working on homomorphic encryption, people are working on uh, very sophisticated operating systems and hypervisors that are secure, that their software is verified, things that are sort of hard from a technology point of view. But, and and we, we, there are many other avenues of research in this space, not just these two. We, we cover them in the paper. But what's common about all these avenues of research is that they, you know, we're trying as computer scientists to raise fences around the data, to use technology to put strong fences around the data and protect or recapture capture back some of the privacy loss. And the goal of this talk and this sort of this paper is to put forward an alternative. The alternative is to build systems, uh, is to sort of attach, it's a, it's a similar alternative, and the alternative is to actually attach terms of service to the data before you upload, upload it to the cloud. So when, when people think about terms of service, the, at least to me, the first thing that comes into my mind is when I go to Facebook and they tell me these terms of service, what, you know, what they're gonna do with my data, and I have pretty much no choice but to agree with it. And it sounds like a crazy idea at first, but let me sort of try to maybe help you know, explain the thought process why we think this is a good idea. On this slide, what we have, we have a user. This user lives currently in Washington, D.C. And he attaches at the bottom there with TOS, I don't know if you can see, but where that sort of certificate is right there, he attaches a, a, a terms of service clause and says, I'm going to upload this GPS reading, but, I, I, you know, the terms of service is you're not supposed to store this GPS reading. In fact, you're only supposed to actually use this GPS reading once. And I want you to use it just for your mapping service. And this particular mapping service is called Bing Maps. Now, historically, terms of services, terms of service are legally binding. The owners of the data can take legal action upon detecting a violation of the terms of services. The key distinction here that 
Historically, terms of service have been applied by websites to our customers. We want to turn the tables. We want customers to apply terms of services to data before they are loaded to the cloud. And in this talk, we're going to put forward an abstraction. The abstraction is called Policy Carrying Data, or PCD. So the data will carry the terms of service, the policy with it. And I have a simple animation that shows how this works. On the right-hand side, I have a mobile device. On the, right, on the left-hand side, I have uh, the cloud. And the mobile device wants to upload a GPS reading. And the idea is that before the upload, uh, the mobile device is going to put the GPS reading into a digital envelope. And this envelope is going to have a policy that says, do not store this GPS reading. You're not allowed to put this on your stable storage. And we're going to send this envelope to the cloud. Now, we want two guarantees from this abstraction. Guarantee number one is that the cloud has to interpret the policy before they access the data. There is no way around that. And the second property is that this interpretation, this step has to be externally verifiable. There has to be a record of it happening. And I'm going to sort of show you how we're doing this in the rest of the talk. Before I do that, I want to go back, and I know that things are a little vague at this point, but I want to sort of tell you how we see this PCD abstraction, this technique, as compared to the current work of raising fences around the, the data. So from a technical point of view, raising fences, raising fences offers much stronger guarantees in that we are going to try to build a system that tries really, really hard to not erode the privacy of the mobile data. However, from a legal, from a contractual perspective, we believe that the guarantees that we offer are stronger than the one that technical systems actually offer. And one of the points that I want to make absolutely clear from the get-go is that our abstraction does not enforce detection of violations. We do not, you, we put these terms of services, we force the cloud to actually look at these terms of services before they get access to the data. But once they get their hands on the data, we don't have that. I mean, if the cloud wants to screw everyone, it's going to you know, do whatever it wants with the data. So this is an outline for the rest of my talk. I finished telling you a little bit about the introduction. Next, I'm going to talk a little, bit about, a little bit about terms of services, and I'll list some examples and sort of how we see this work in practice. Then I'm going to talk about this new abstraction called Policy Carrying Data, or PCD. I'm going to then talk about performance, related work, and conclusions, because those are important. So let me now talk about terms of services and list some examples. On this slide, what you see right now is three terms of service examples. And these are examples that we believe the average user sort of relates to. So here's one example of a policy you can put to your mobile data. I want to say, you know, when I make this transaction, I want to specify that my credit card is used for a single transaction only. I don't want the cloud to store my credit card because there is a long history of uh, data uh, breaches into the cloud where my credit card is compromised and they don't need to store my credit card number. Another example is that when I upload photos to Facebook, I would like Facebook not to do sort of detailed processing of my photos. Don't do face recognition, don't do object recognition. I would like when I upload my mobile data, my mobile, my, sorry, my health data, to restrict any form of third, sh third uh, party sharing. I don't want my mobile health data to be shared by God knows whom. So these are sort of some of the examples for terms of services. At the bottom, there are more terms of services. So what is the distinction between the bottom and the top ones? The top ones are things that we think the sort of the average user, the average sort of uh, person who carries a smartphone can relate to. The bottom ones are things that I think us, we computer scientists can relate to. Maybe the average mobile user cannot. Um, but you can do things much more sophisticated where you can actually specify anonymity policies, data shareability policies, data retention policies. And you can also specify compliance policies that have to do with um, the software, the hardware, the physical location of where the cloud is. So for example, I want to say things like, you know, I want my, my GPS readings to be stored on a machine that is bit lockered or that uses some sort of verified operating system like Secure 4 or that it has a, a trusted computing hardware like a TPM or that it's located in the US. I don't want my information to go to servers somewhere else, just in the US. Our solution is similar to how valuable data is already treated in many other cases out there. For example, websites routinely publish terms of service on how users must treat their contents. Programmers attach licenses to their code before releasing the code to the public domain. 
And also the DVD industry, even though you paid $15, $20 to buy the DVD, they force you to watch a short clip before watching the movie that says, if you were to copy this DVD, you're going to go to jail. Okay, so there's, there's a lot of history like that. But at this point, you might wonder, you know, those policies, they're really complex. I don't really understand them. And we want now users to add those to the data. That seems crazy. Um, and we think, you know, it's true, but we think there is ways to sort of help users. There is actually an industry out there that tries to sort of color code these policies. You know, a green policy is one that's permissive, that can attach to my name. I'm happy with my name, with, with Facebook sharing my name with other people on Facebook. I don't really care about that. But maybe the red policy is something that is very strict. I don't want my credit card number to be shared with God knows who. And finally, we believe there are incentive, incentives for third-party detection mechanisms to arrive, arise. We believe there, is, there are sort of opportunities and for, 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 a, for a cottage, cottage industry of third parties to come and say, we're going to actually monitor these cloud providers, and when we detect uh, violations of their policies, we're going to actually help you sue them and make money on that. So it's sort of like it's the American way. Okay, so I told you about terms of service. Next, I'm going to tell you about policy carrying data, PCD, which is this new, abstractions, new abstraction that we're putting forward. So like I said earlier, our PCD offers two requirements. Requirement number one, or two guarantees. Guarantee number one is that the cloud has to interpret the policy. There's no way to access the data without interpreting the policy. And guarantee number two is that there is an externally verifiable record of, of step one. So here's the, sort of the first idea we had. We said we, you can actually use encryption. When we're sort of bastardizing the use of encryption here, we're using encryption in a different way that is historically being used. The key idea, and don't worry a little bit about the security parts of this, but think about I'm going to encrypt my data, my GPS reading with a policy before I'm actually sending it to the cloud. Okay. So, so in order for the cloud to decrypt, and get access to my GPS reading, they have to have the policy on their hands. So I'm going to give you an example here. Don't worry about the security properties of this example. I can maybe alleviate those in the future slides. So on the right-hand side, I have a mobile user. On the left-hand side, I have a, a, the cloud. The user has a GPS reading and it has a policy. And let's suppose we just XOR those, okay? And we upload this, this blob of data to the cloud, and in order for the cloud to get access to the GPS reading, the cloud has to XOR again this blob, the two XORs of the policies cancel, and it gets access to the GPS reading. So the cloud needs the policy to get access to the data. And this was our strawman design, and sort of this takes a step towards the, the properties we want, but then we start worrying about this. And the reason why we worried was because you can probably cast, you can cast doubt as to whether the cloud really interprets the policy, right? The cloud actually just used the policy, which is a series of bits. It extors another series of bits, and it got the GPS reading. Is that really interpreting the policy? And then we started, you know, fighting among ourselves as to what does it mean exactly to interpret the policy, and how, what would interpret the policy mean in a court of law? You know, how do we actually have a legal meaning to that? And this is a hard problem, and uh, frankly, we don't know the answer to this problem. We, we talked to some lawyers, but my sense is we talked to the wrong lawyers. I think there are some other lawyers who can actually <laughs> tell us more about this. Um, the other problem is that it doesn't mean requirement number two. There is no externally verifiable record of this happening. So then we actually use this other sort of trick called attribute-based encryption. This is a mo more sophisticated encryption scheme. This is an encryption scheme that was came out in uh, about 15 years ago. So it's not that novel. There's a lot of work in the crypto community around these sort of encryption schemes. Um, and I'm going to refer to this encryption scheme as ABE for attribute-based encryption. And before I tell you how we use it, I'm going to show, show you how ABE works. So again, I have a mobile user and I have the cloud. With ABE now, I have to have a privacy authority. And this privacy authority, its role is to sort of keep track of what clouds promise out there. What is it, who, you know, what does Microsoft's policy is? And we think that this policy authority, authority can be uh, organizations like the EFF or maybe, or maybe a news organization like The Guardian. And it's just, a, it's just a party whose goal is to keep a record of what are the promises that the cloud makes. Now, the cloud has a list of attributes. So, for example, the cloud says, 
you know, we're not going to store GPS readings if you actually send them to big maps. We were going to, if for the uh, US based customers, we're going to keep those in the US and things like that. And this list of attributes, they send them to the cloud, to the, to, sorry, they send them to this privacy authority. And in exchange, this privacy authority generates a set of decryption keys that passes them back to the cloud. And I'm going to go back to those in, in, in a little while. The other step is that there has to be a public key. This key is public, everybody has access to it. So there has to be this hands off key exchange to the mobile user. There are a couple of things I want to mention here that are really important. Thing number one is that this whole key setup that I have in this uh, slide, it's a rare operation. Um, you know, the, the privacy authority is not involved in encryption decryption, it's not involved in, in users accessing Bing Maps or Google Maps or whatever. It's just to, involved in this key exchange. And this key exchange is a rare operation. Um, it's not a really a one-time operation. You have to redo key exchange if the privacy authority wants to recycle the keys or if the cloud decides to change the list of attributes it has. And it's actually, it's kind of neat there because, uh, okay, I'll skip that. I'll tell you more in person. Okay, so we exchange these things. Now, how do we encrypt? Well, sorry. The mobile user uses the public key and the policy to encrypt and sends that data to the cloud. And here is the key cap is that decryption is successful if and only if the attributes match the policy. So if, if the cloud says we're actually going to store GPS readings and the customers, the mobile user says I don't want GPS readings to be stored, decryption fails. So how do we use this with PCD or with uh, policy cloud, uh, policy carrying data? So the mobile device takes the GPS reading, it takes the public key, it takes the policy saying please don't store this, and it encrypts it, and it sends, it sends it to the cloud, and the cloud attempts to decrypt it. And decryption is successful if and only if the cloud declare that yes, they're not going to store the GPS readings. Okay, that's the key observation here. And we think PCD meets these two requirements that we put forward. And the reason for that is because AB, this encryption scheme, forces to the cloud to declare what are the properties, what are the list of attributes that are offered. And it has to declare that, otherwise it gets no, no decryption keys. It declares that, and it gets some decryption keys in the back, in, in exchange. And because of this, the website must be able to declare that it satisfies the mobile user's policy before accessing the data. And there's also an externally verifiable record of this, right? So we need these two guarantees that I talked about. Okay, so I told you about PCD. Let me tell you a little bit about performance evaluation. Um, we took a public, so there isn't a lot of uh, implementation of attribute-based encryption out there. There's sort of a generic one that everybody uses. It's been done a while ago by a guy who was formerly, by a crypto guy who sort of had a, a knack for coding. And we used that, those libraries on an NVIDIA Tegra uh, Jetson, Jetson kit. This is sort of a, a, a SOG that you find in commodity, in the Nexus 7 tablet from Google, for example. So sort of the commodity tablets we see today. And what you see in this graph is how much encryption and decryption takes as a function of how complex the policy is. So a simple policy could be, I don't want you to store the GPS reading. A complex policy is something like, I don't want you to GPS, I don't want you to store the GPS reading, and I want to make sure that your servers are delockered and that your servers are only in the United States. Okay? So, so you sort of have more attributes. So the x-axis here shows one attribute all the way to ten attributes, and you can have as many attributes as you want. The more attributes you have, the worse the performance is, okay? The y-axis is milliseconds. And there are two points that I want to drive across. <coughs> One is that, personally, I don't think performance is that bad. Encryption, which is done by a mobile user, takes less than a quarter of a second to sort of get privacy. That's not too bad. The, the more interesting thing that I kind of liked from AB, and I can tell you why that is if you're interested, is that decryption is actually much faster than encryption. Uh, as you can see in this graph. The other thing, keep in mind that decryption here is measured on an NVIDIA Tegra board. Decryption is done by the cloud. So we worried about decryption because cloud, the cloud has you know, millions of customers. It has to decryption. And that decryption step has to be fast. Otherwise, the cloud will not probably sign up to do this. So it's faster than encryption. Good news number one. But the other thing is that these numbers are on NVIDIA tablet, and we expect the clouds like the Googles and the Microsoft and the, the Amazons of the world to use server class machines, and decryption is very fast on those. Okay, let me tell you a little bit about related work. So PCD, policy carrying data, is inspired from an earlier piece of work we've done that is called Excalibur, which appeared at the Usenix Security a couple of years ago. 
And in Excalibur, we also use ABE to encrypt users' data and bind it to a policy. But in Excalibur, we did that, the same thing that everybody does, which is we went out and we used heavy policy enforcement. We used uh, secure hypervisors with this esoteric hypervisor. We used DPMs. We used uh, security protocol that we ended up, we, we did, then do, did some actually verification on them. So it's a lot of techniques we use to sort of stop the cloud from violating the policy. PCD doesn't stop the cloud from violating the policy. It just sort of gives legal ammunition to the, to the mobile users. So to wrap up, mobile users face a privacy crisis. And the current, all current approaches in our mind is to sort of raise technological barriers around the data. Here we're putting forward a different approach, which is to attach terms of service to the data. We put forward PCD, this new abstraction, and it has a number of good things, advantages, which are that the websites must interpret the policy before it gets access to the data. There's an externally verifiable record of it. You can attach all sorts of policy. You can attach simpler policy, more complex policies, any policies you want. Uh, and it has adequate performance. The drawbacks of PCD is that it doesn't stop the cloud from actually violating the policy. The cloud says, yeah, you know, I'm not going to store your data. And then it says, screw you, I'm going to store it. Who cares? So there's no sort of mechanism in place to stop the cloud from violating the policy. The other thing is that in order for PCD to be useful, we need a way to detect violations of policies. And we, we don't talk about that in our paper. That's it. Thank you very much for your attention.